Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying this squimp variant. It's an excellent pattern. Uh, I mean, squimps are great, but this wee version here has accounted for an awful lot of fish for me over the years. Um, I'm not long back from a trip to Okinawa and it was for all of us that were there, it was far and away the top fly. Um, by a long way. Uh, anyway, as always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone who wants to support the channel, get access to the online fly tying classes, and other giveaways, and access to the members only content. Alternatively, watch the video all the way through, comment below, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button, that all helps the channel. So I've got my hook in my vise and I'm tying a size 4. Um, this is a Gamakatsu SL11 3H. This is um, it's quite a big size 4. Right? But that's fine for me because I'm not tying this as a bonefish squimp. Um, I mean, the squimp originated as a bonefish fly, but it's a fantastic all round flats pattern. Uh, and well worth a place in your box. There, there are very few fish that, that are on the flats that you couldn't confidently cast a squimp at. Um, I mean, a barracuda, maybe, and uh, maybe a shark. Right, they're got to, are, are, are no exactly targets. But anything else, bonefish permit, various trevally species, tuskies, all that, they'll, you know, everything will eat a squimp. Now, I'm not adding the weight right away, uh, I'm going to tie the tail first, so that I've got like a, a lifted dumbbell, which helps kill the fly and helps turn it over better, it helps it to track it if you're stripping it. So I'm going to start with some crystal flash, this is, I've got a kind of pinky orange here, I'm just I've got one strand, I cut it in half, I folded it over. And I want that, that that's just about the perfect length. They're, they're slightly different lengths, but the longest is about a hook and a half, right? Which is roughly what the craft fur will be. I'm going to add a set of rubber legs. Just take a single strand of the silicon. And I'll just get these a little. Uh, tan tip, clear with a tan tip. It's the, I think these are the EPI, EP crustacean legs, but use whatever you like. Right? I just kind of like the colour of these. And I want these longer, right? Um, so a good two hook lengths off the back, right? Um, so, or, or maybe even more, right? It's up to you. Catch them in. I always want the rubber legs to be longer than the craft fur tail. Otherwise, they kind of get I feel they kind of get lost. Um, which these back legs, they're swimmy. They're not really adding vibration, right? They're swimmy and they're wafty when it's sitting still. So you don't want them just disappearing. And with the craft fur, otherwise, what's the point in adding them? I'm just coming back and I'm making sure I'm keeping the thread in touch and turn so I got a nice base, right? Um, I don't want any wee bumps of the silicon coming up. And then when I get far enough forward, I'll just put it out and just continue, right? Get the last of it covered up. And then we're ready for the craft for wing, or tail, I should say. Get a decent bunch. I mean, this is quite a large fly, right? Um, and this is the size I was using the other week there. Yellow Sport Trevally, Brassy Trevally, Emperors. They were all eating this kind of bigger version. Um, I'm cleaning the under, like the short, crinkly hairs, the under fur, a lot of people call it. Looks not really fur. And then it's a bit straggly, the taper's a bit long, so we'll just take the longest fibres 
and lay them back in. Just make sure I get it sitting how I like. Then I'll come in and I'll let. Just got to use my scissors just to. Sometimes that's a bit quicker than just repeatedly try to restack it. Um, I'll come in and I'll let that be about the same length as the crystal flash. Catch it. And the point I'm catching it here is just in line with the point of the hook. Then I'm going to go back and touch and turns and just holding it tight. And let myself come around the bend. And I always like to come around the bend with a scrimp, even if I'm tying like a size 8 or something. Uh, well, a like rabbit for bonefish or you know a different, like a wee short fly. I like this sticking up so that when the fly's at rest, it's in my mind at least it looks kind of like it's in a defensive position, right? Um, it's just a confidence thing. I don't know that it makes any difference to the actual fish, but now I'll come back here, I'll take my my waist and cut it at a taper. Put the waist in the wee tub with the under fur, and then I'll just wind forward, touch and turns, keeping everything tidy. Right, and this also makes your fly more durable, right? Like having a good well covered up base, right? If you're tying you know you're tying it if you're just tying it on like it's all gaps and all that and you're tying it on uncompressed craft fur. That's just something that can move and, and cause a weakness. Dumbbell eye. Tie them in different weights. Um, for my fishing I don't really have much use for a, a bead chain really. Uh, the flats fishing I do. But you tie them from a bead chain to a tungsten dumbbell. Different sizes. And I'm going to just catch this in. This is a brass dumbbell, right? This is the lightest I'm going to tie for myself uh, in this fly. And you can see there the front edge, I like the front edge of the eye kind of in line with the point of the hook. That means, that again, when it rests, the back's kicked up and there's enough weight here that it'll, that it'll rest at the hook eye. Now, get this tied in nice and secure. Over and under, and under and over. Right now, the other thing that you'll notice, see if you tie like this, because it's no just on the round shank. Right, this is built up. It's much harder for the ice to twist and rotate, even when a fish crushes that crushes the fly. Um, so you'll notice, even when you've caught ten fish on it, it's far more likely that these eyes will be still locked in place. Again, that's great, it just means you need to think about one less thing when you're on the water. So I'm just going to get some head cement now at this stage. Just coat everything. Oops. Big drip. Right, like that, that will soak in very quickly. And then we're ready for a wee bit dubbing. Now I like to dub the body, uh, it's the kind of main change, other than adjusting the proportions, making that a bit longer. Um, dubbing is fantastic on a flats fly. It adds a degree of translucency that you just don't get with a chenille. So I'm going to add a hot spot first, and I'm using fluorescent shell pink uh, ice dub. And I'm going to put quite a decent amount on because you brush it, right? Um, there's no point in dubbing any subsurface pattern if you're not going to brush it, right? So I'm going to come up, fill this space behind the dumbbells and the tail, or between the dumbbells and the tail. Come back, I'll just run my thread through just to kind of tighten up. And you can see it's quite a wee fat ball I've built up, right? You don't want much more than this. If you you can overdo it, but don't be afraid to put stuff on because I'm going to be very aggressive when I get in here with the Velcro. 
I'm going to finish the rest of the body with the under fur from the craft fur. Right, same colour as same colour as I used for the tail and I will use for the wing. So we'll get this on. And I'm going to start with a kind of slightly lighter noodle of dubbin, uh, just to sort of get a decent figure eight through these dumbbells. And then we can I mean there's several figure eights, I think that's better than just doing one big thick one. Uh, and then get plenty on here. Just come down. Don't come too far. Leave yourself a good good hook eye and a half to two hook eyes clear. Because I want to add a weed guard. And I want to also add my wing and my front legs, you know, there's you need a good bit of space. And then I'll just come down again, just rib through that. I mean and you could you could just finish the fly here and it would be a good fish catching fly. But we're not gonna do that. So I just put a half hitch in here just in case I pop my thread. I'm going to really come in. I'm going to focus on the hook gap side. I don't want to brush the underside too much. I mean a wee brush, but I want, I want to bring most of the material out on the sides and in the hook gap, which will be the top of the fly. And then get that ice stub. And you can see like you start to add you make you make it translucent and this all moves. You know that that when the fly's sitting still, it's it's no static, right? Like it's it's bristling and moving and looking alive. Just got a wee bit more brushing done in here and the in the gap there, and and it gets better. You you know you catch a couple of fish, it gets even rougher. That's good there, right? So, as I say, rather than just chenille or whatever, you've now got this sort of translucent, shrimpy looking body wing. Same craft fur, or I mean, if you want it, you could use a darker craft fur or, or whatever, you know, you can adjust and add a wee bit of contrast into the pattern. Clean out the clean out the under for. It's very humid here today and it's sort of sticking to me a wee bit. Not like this, the wing the wing wants to be about the same the same thickness as the as the tail, right? Maybe slightly sparser. Because you don't need a thick wing to help flip it, right? You've got the weight dropped off, you've got you've brushed the material into the hook gap, the tail's above the shank, right? Oh that's helping to flip. And this does provide some drag as well. Uh, now the length of this, with this being a long-tailed squimp, right? In fact, I would say this stands for stands true for any squimp, regardless of the length. You often see them with the wing is the same length, right? It's coming right out to where the tail is. But I find that that wraps a lot. Um, you, I mean, if it's shorter, it's you'll get away with it. But what I like to do. Because the way I've tapered the tail, I can come in here and the tips, the tips of my wing are going to meet the taper of the tail fibres, right? And that gives the fly a nice overall sort of teardrop tapered shape. So we'll just catch that in. And then just to make sure everything's sitting on top, we'll just sort of lift, hold the butt ends and the wing and just lift them up so that you're not rolling anything and lock that in, two or three wraps that looks pretty good to me I've just got to moisten this to sort of control it, get it out of the way trim away my waist and then I'll come back, I need enough space, I need that sort of eye length and a half and I'll just 
Take it out. And then I'm going to get another leg. Um, you can use the same legs, you can use different legs. Up to yourself. Uh, I like, I don't know if I said this earlier, I like the leg to be kind of neutral. Um, or, or maybe like striped or something. I tend not to use the leg to add the hotspot. I prefer to use the thread in the flashy dubbing or whatever because that's not going to break. And you know, you could catch a few fish and you will lose legs. Um, so, same legs with. So, I'm putting the dart tan tip towards the back. And don't be tempted, again, this is something that you see a lot with these with flies like this. Don't be tempted to make the, the rubber leg too long going back. If you go too far back, it'll foul in the, in the hook gap. Right? So, I'm just going to pinch this in. And if I grab the wing out of the way, you can see I'm just about. That's maybe a wee bit long there. I'm just about a hook gap beyond. In fact, I'm just going to trim this one back rather than try to adjust it and risk snapping it. I'll just trim it back. I'm just about a hook gap beyond the bend of the hook. No more, right? And I don't have them right out to the right out on the side of the shank. I like them sort of on top into the side so something like half past two and half past nine if the if the, if the hook points at 12 will give you a kind of idea of where I like them I'm going forward touching turns again so I'm keeping it smooth <coughs> and then just trim these to length right, don't want them too long now you could whip any shear if you like, I always put a weed guard on, I have never found that I think it costs me fish, um, certainly with the flying all getting snagged up in the volcanic rock and the coral and all that, I think this wee sprig is, is more than worth putting in. So I'm just going to, this is £20 uh, hard mono, I happen to be using Rio at the moment but I don't care really what brand it is, it's just whatever they've got in stock when I buy it. So I crimped that there with the pliers just to flatten the end and I'll tie that in. I've got to come in, hold my wing and then I'll just use my thumb and my index finger and just r run the thread back against my finger and let it drop in behind that monofilament there and that stands it up and then I can whip finish just do it by hand, you don't need the tool you can use the tool if you like another one always put two on because as I say especially fishing like in the South Pacific and that um, it's coral it's volcanic rock, it's it's an it's abrasive bottoms. That extra whip finish is free and it certainly helps the flight to last. Just come in, cut that there, that's fine. Weed up varnish, and I always use varnish, no super glue. You right, use just ordinary head cement because the super glue, I don't care what anybody is saying about the people who are paid. Right, um, you know, people who've got an interest in selling Zappa Gap to you, it's no salt waterproof, right? It whitens up, it hardens up, but is the varnish, right? It's not a CA, it's nice and durable in the salt. You can add a couple of coats if you're concerned. So, you don't need to do this, but I like to add some stripes. like about five or six and I'm just, I like a brown you can use black, some folk like black, it's up to you really 
There we go. And that's it. That there's just a scruffy, scruffy squint variation, but I wouldn't go anywhere without this in my box. Um, it just catches fish. It's, it's excellent. Squimps in general. Squimps in general are excellent. And this is this is one of them. So I guess I'm tied. All right. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below, and I'll see you for another one. Take lines, guys. Bye.